Hello, Namaskar. My name is T.S. Sudhir and you're watching the explanation video of Macbeth here on Study with Sudhir. This is the concluding scene as far as IAC class 11th syllabus is concerned. Act 2, scene 4. We have done action Macbeth ke castle ke andar ho raha tha uske bare mein to humne puri tarah se pad liya hai scene 1 scene 2 aur scene 3 mein this particular scene takes place outside macbeth's castle right it's a distance away from macbeth's castle and yahan par mukhya patra koi bhi nahi hai macbeth lady macbeth banco vagara nahi hai ross is there along with an old man and later on macduff makes his entry so old man says three score and 10 i can remember well Okay, so he's saying, and important to uh, remember that this old man is in contrast to the witches. Okay, ki jis tarah ka character humne act 1 mein, scene 1 mein, or scene 3 mein witches ka dekha, uske contrast mein hai ye buddha admi, ek vrith admi, because the witches were about ki aage kya hoga. Wo bhavishyavani kar rahe the, lekin, ये जो बूढ़ा आदमी है, he is talking about जो पहले भूतकाल में जो हो चुका था, okay? He is talking about how the natural order of the world has been distorted, okay? So that's what this particular scene is all about. As we are reaching the last bit out here, and of course uh, for class twelve we'll be doing Act three, Act four, Act five. I just want to point out that in case if you are looking for to be a part of the Macbeth course for class 11 and thereafter in class 12, it's best to kind of do that right at the outset if you plan to do that in class 12. Class 11 also, all the videos, notes, reasoning questions, MCQs, uh, long format question and answers, 5 marks, 10 marks and doubt solving is all part of the course. So please look at the Macbeth course and take an informed decision. Now, he says that I can remember clearly what happened in the last 70 years. Three score and a 10. So one score is 20. So 20 into 3 plus 10. So you are talking about 70 years. So for the last 70 years, Mirko sab yaad hai, within the volume of which time I have seen. That is, I can remember clearly what happened in the past 70 years. In that time, the volume of which time I have seen, volume to convey as if Time was a book. Okay. I have seen so many dreadful and strange things. Dreadful, hours, dreadful and things strange. But this sore night hath trifled former knowings. Lekin jo is raat mein jo ghata hai, isse pehle ki jo jitne bhi mere experience hai, wo kaafi kam lagte hai. Okay. O good father, thou seest the heavens as troubled with man's act, threaten this bloody stage by the clock its day, and yet dark night strangles the travelling lamp. So Ross kata hai, oh yes, old man, you can see that the skies, jo asman hai, they are troubled by the acts of men and threaten the bloody earth. Okay, bloody earth on which the murder has been committed. So there is constant reference to what has happened just before this. With storms. According to the clock, it's daytime, yet dark night strangles the sun. So it is daytime, but aisa lag raha hai, as though the dark night is kind of strangulating the sun. So it is very overcast at this point in time. Sun is the traveling lamp. The traveling lamp is a reference to the sun. Is it night's predominance or the day shame that darkness does the face of earth entomb when living light? should kiss it. So he says that is it because that the night is so strong? Predominance means, you know, being more dominant. So it is talking about the strength of the night or the day shame that darkness does face of earth into. One second. Huh? So he's talking about the fact that is it because the night is so strong and powerful than day or is it because that the day is hiding its face in shame that darkness is covering the earth like a tomb at a time when light should actually kiss it. I repeat, uh, is it because, and I'm deliberately putting it in English so you can take notes because it will be useful for you in your exam. Mein. Is it because that the night is so strong or night's predominance or the day is hiding its face in shame 
that darkness is covering the earth like a tomb at a time when light should actually kiss it because it is daytime but it is extremely overcast at this point in time old man says it is unnatural ye natural cheez nahi ho rahi hai even like the deed that is done on tuesday last a falcon towering in her pride of place was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed so he's now talking about what happened last tuesday he says that it is unnatural just like the murder that has been committed just now in macbeth's castle last tuesday a falcon was soaring falcon is a eagle or a hawk kind of a bird so it was soaring high up in the sky okay towering in its price of played pride of place that is in the sky when it was attacked and killed by an owl which normally goes after mice an owl ullu normally chuhon ko khata hai attack karke lekin usne ullu ne falcon ko attack kar kiya to ye kafi unnatural ghatna hai ross then says so remember ye point number 1 hai point number 2 so he is talking about many unnatural events that have actually taken place ever since the murder because the falcon represents nobility it represents pride and king duncan is represented by all these qualities so the killing represents the disruption of the natural order please use this phrase disruption of the natural order and the owl as we know by now is a creature which is is a bird that is associated with evil and something bad that is going to happen dusra kissa so this is the first one that has been mentioned the second one that is mentioned out here is about duncan's horses a king most a thing most strange and certain beauteous and swift the minions of their race turned wild in nature broke their stalls flung out contending against obedience as they would make war with mankind so he says this is also just as strange because duncan ke jo sundar aur tej ghode the and the best minions means the best that's how shakespeare used it because minions ka modern english mein arth alag rehta hai the best of their beard they suddenly turned wild and broke out of their stalls wo apne tabele se todkar bahar nikle they kicked wildly turned wild in nature broke their stalls flung out they refused to be obedient contending against obedience matlab obedience ke khilaf they refused to be obedient and shant hone se unhone mana kiya they were acting as if they were at war with mankind as though wo puri manavta ke sath ek tarah se yuddh kar rahe the that's how the horses of duncan were behaving old man said it is said that they eat each other aisa kaha jata tha ki ghodon ne ek dusre ko khaya ross said i saw it with my own eyes they did so to my amazement mere main bilkul achamba reh gaya achamba hua mere ko jab main achambit reh gaya main mere ko achamba hua jab maine ye drishya dekha ki wo ek dusre ko hi kha rahe the which is again an unnatural thing to happen that looked upon it here comes a good macduff macduff enter karta hai how goes the world now why see you not kya tumko nahi dikhta is it known who did this more than the bloody deed uh, ki ye ye kisne kiya ye kisi ko malum hai those that macbeth has slain jis, jis, jisko macbeth ne maar giraya yani ki un security guards ne hi duncan ka khoon kiya tha alas the day what good could they pretend ki unko kya what would they have gained by killing duncan they were suborned malcolm and donalbin the king's two sons are stolen away and fled which puts upon them the suspicion of the deed he says that they were hired suborned ka matlab hai they were unko they were like contract killers okay they were hired by malcolm and donalbin ye dono bete they have wahan se gayab ho gaye hain aur us isi wajah se unke upar suspicion of the deed such us is khoon ka shak unke upar jata hai against nature still thriftless ambition that will raving up thine old life's means so he says ross says that is even more unnatural that because usko malum hai malcolm ko abhi abhi promote kiya gaya hai usko ek naya title diya gaya hai ki what an unwise ambition thriftless matlab ambition causing sons to kill their father who gave them life because raj duncan ne hi unko jeevan diya hai right to uske bavjood why should the sons kill the father then it looks like macbeth will become king to aisa lagta hai sovereignty mein matlab rajpaat abhi macbeth ke sar par girega uh, he is already named and gone to scone to be invested to wo scone chala gaya scone wo jagah hai jahan par scotland ke rajaon ka rajpaat hota hai unko raja ghoshit kiya jata hai so he is already gone to uh, scone to be uh, crowned the king 
So he says, where is Duncan's body? He said it has been carried to uh, St. Colm's Kill, uh, uh, the sacred burial place of his predecessors. And that is the guardian of their bones where their remains are preserved. Now, St. Columba's call on the island of Ionia was the uh, traditional burial place for the Scottish kings. Or I mean, uska chota naam hai. Saint Colmes Kill. The actual name would be Saint Columbus Call. This is the full name. Okay. Will you to scorn? Kya tum scorn ja rahe ho? He says no. Main five ja raha hu. So he says Ross says that. Uh, well, I will uh, go to scorn then. Well, may you see things well done there, Edu. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. So may things go well there. I hope that whatever the work is done, it will be good there. Goodbye, lest our former king. It is not that our king was the king of Duncan. He turns out to be better suited for the job than our new king, Macbeth. So take a little bit of faith in the mind of Macbeth. In the mind of Macbeth. So the reference to the old robes is, could be a reference to the robes of the king. जो राजा कपड़े पहनते हैं, which is used in the investor जो पूरा coronation की जो ceremony होती है, उस समय पर पहने और Scotland, England, Ireland वगैरह में काफी elaborate ceremony होती है। So इस line को interpreted interpret करने के दो तरीके हैं। पहला है, एक तो Macduff एक तरह से चिंता व्यक्त कर रहा है about the potential challenges that will come with the change. The old robes are the familiar robes, the comfortable robes, जिसके बारे में उनको पूरी तरह से जानकारी है, whereas the new robes are something which they do not really know well about, and that could be a bit of a problem. So Macduff is underestimating the challenge, is cautioning, एक तरह से चेतावनी दे रहा है कि जो challenges आएंगे, उसको हम underestimate बिल्कुल ना करें, and the old robes also represent some kind of old order and stability. This is another interpretation. Which the new robes, in a way, the new leadership, the new nethritv, which is Macbeth, represents it. Represent so he is a little worried and concerned that the new ruler may not be as good as Duncan was, may not be as competent as Duncan was. So, in a way, Macbeth's statement says that there is a little doubt and he is not very comfortable with this change of regime which has happened in Scotland. So old man, then he says, God's benison, may God's blessing, benison matlab blessing, go with you and those with, and those, and with those that would make good of bad and friends of foes. So he says that, and with all those people uh, who make good out of bad and friends out of enemies. So may God be, blessing be with you. So with this, we come to the end of the act 2 scene 4 khatam ho gaya hai i hope puri tarah se aapko samajh mein aa gaya hoga and uh, share support subscribe to study with sudeep thank you very much